Hello everyone. Welcome back to my project box. Um, here I have the uh, Sonoff M5 uh, smart switch. Um, in this range it's the three gang version and uh, I think it's meant to replace uh, one of uh, a sort of traditional three gang uh, light switch like this or something similar. Um, but there's one small problem of course. Um, a lot of these uh, smart switches require a neutral connection and um, depending where you are in the world or how your house is wired, uh, you might not have this neutral connection behind the light switch. It's not all that common. Um, so what do you do? Do you pull it extra neutral down to the light switch? Um, that might not always be possible. So one of my viewers suggested um, I try my experimental circuit from the Sonoff Mini R2 where it generates a virtual neutral behind the light switch and it's a very simple little circuit and uh, I thought that was an excellent idea and uh, I tried it and it works. And um, all you really need to make this work is um, a capacitor and um, four little rectifier diodes like this. Four diodes and a capacitor, that's it. And that's the basic circuit that will work. What we'll do is we'll add um, we'll add this fusible resistor to take some of the stress off this capacitor, and it'll act as a fuse if something goes wrong, just for a bit of extra safety. But this is it. This is all you need to make it work. So come and join me, and I'll show you guys exactly how I did it. And uh, you can try experiment at home and see if it works for you guys. So here's a simple diagram showing you how everything connects together. And as you can see, there is no neutral connection anywhere behind the M5 smart switch. The switch line shares both the neutral virtually sending it back to the smart switch and also the switch line to control the bulb. So we have uh, a diode pointing up and a diode pointing down, connecting the down diode to the neutral and one of the channels out joins together with the diode to the switch line. And of course the live terminal is just fed from the live supply as normal. And then there's also a diode pointing up and a diode pointing down connected together. That connects to a capacitor and that connects to the light bulb. And that's the circuit. I won't go in details yet on how it works. I'll first show you um, it wired up and how to wire it up. And then we'll test it and then I'll explain exactly how it works in the end. So let's look at a little um, lighting circuit mock-up. We've got our three gang switch controlling these three little um, light bulbs, LED light bulbs. And um, it's quite likely that if we look behind here, we only have a live feeding the commons and uh, the three separate switches just switch these light bulbs individually and no neutral behind here at all. So, uh, that makes fitting the Sonoff M5 a bit tricky because you don't have our neutral. So let's see if we can use um, my little circuit hack to take one of these neutrals sitting at the bulbs. We somehow virtually send it back to the light switch, which, which could be quite far away. So obviously wiring up this switch is not going to work. We wire it all up and uh, there's no neutral wire to put in there, in the neutral connection. So what we'll do is we have three output channels for the three bulbs. We'll take out the one of the channels and make that our virtual neutral feedback channel. And uh, what we can do is we make a little circuit. We, we need two diodes, um, one that goes in that hole and one that goes in that hole. So what we do is we take two rectifier diodes and we turn them back to back. So basically one facing up and one facing down. So the arrows point, one points up and one points down and you hold them at an angle like that and you twist them together. There we go. And um, now the one that points uh, outward that's the one that goes towards the neutral. So we'll just do a crude demonstration here now. 
We can do it much nicer later, but it'll just prove the concept. Obviously, we don't want bare conductors on show, but for test purposes, it'll be fine. And then what we can do is we can uh, trim that back a bit. And put a little connector block on it. Just to test and improve the circuit. There we go, crude, not very pretty, but it should prove the point. Then again, what we do is we take two diodes and we have one pointing up and one pointing down and we twist them together. And then we take our capacitor And the, the diode that points away, that's the one that's going to go to the um, positive. So the negative is indicated with this gold line here. So we'll put this at an angle like that. We'll twist those together. twist the other leg together on the capacitor. There we go. That's our basic uh, circuit done. So this will be the bypass to send the neutral back via the diodes to that bit, to the switch. So now we just uh, trim off the ugly ends. There we go. And this bit here now goes to the light bulb. So the negative will go of the capacitor that will go to the neutral. And the positive of the capacitor goes to where the live used to go. Now what we need to do is we need to take uh, the live out because that now will connect to this terminal here. And uh, we'll bend these so that it's uh, easy to put them in. These are kind of push-fit spring-loaded terminals, so they're quite convenient for this demonstration. We'll just coax those in. And like I said before, this is all uninsulated, but it will prove, um, prove the concept. That's what we're doing now, just prove that it works. That's the basic, uh, the basic circuit there. That should, should in theory work. So if we um, liven that up, if we're lucky, we didn't make any mistakes. I don't know if you can see that, but there's uh, blinking lights on the Sonoff, and it's just connected to the Wi-Fi. So as you can see, the smart switch works now, but we also have control with Wi-Fi from the app. There you go, no neutral required, like magic. That's super cool. So now that we have the proof of concept working, I think we should refine it a bit and uh, just make everything a bit nicer, see if we can insulate things, maybe add some fly leads and wires to it to make it a, a little bit easier to terminate and install. Now, of course, having um, just a pair of bare diodes twisted together does the job, but um, I'm not a huge fan of having bare naked conductors poking out from terminal screws. 
So what I thought is a good idea to do is uh, we can take those diodes, shrink them into heat shrink sleeving to give them some insulation and solder some little flexible fly leads to it. Then these leads can be terminated, these wires can be terminated straight into the M5 smart switch. And the other end can go into a terminal block of choice, like a Wago terminal. So I think this is a, a much uh, neater solution and safer as well. And of course the same thing goes for our um, capacitor diode bypass circuit. Uh, we can't have these bare twisted leads on show. It's just not, uh, even though it works fine, it's just not very safe. It's not a good idea. So we want to insulate them up with some heat shrink sleeving. And what we want to do is add this fuse or fusible resistor um, in line there. And what that would do is it would open up like a fuse if anything goes wrong with this capacitor. Um, and also it acts as an inrush limiter that uh, limits the extreme in inrush currents to this capacitor to a safer level. And it makes everything last a little bit longer. So it's kind of dual purpose, but it's quite an important component. Um, strictly speaking, the circuit will work without it, but this will make it that much better. So I do recommend you include this 10 ohm fusible resistor. With the addition of the heat shrink sleeving and the flexible fly leads, we've made ourselves a nice little bypass module, which should make it an absolute breeze to terminate. Now I think it would be rude of me not to explain how this voodoo black magic electricery works. Now only one relay output and its corresponding light bulb will act as our virtual neutral return. The rest of the relay channels just control their lamps as normal and are connected like they normally would have been. So to declutter things, let's remove the other two light bulbs and relay channels and just focus on the bypass circuit bit. So of course we have a AC power supply, which by its very nature reverses its polarity 50 or 60 times per second. And we can take advantage of that by using diodes to steer the current in certain directions where we can use them to power our device or power the light bulb. And that means we can share one wire to do this. So the neutral is sent back via the diodes in the form of half wave DC back to the Sonoff to power itself. And then at the same time, the other half of the AC waveform can be switched via the relay through its corresponding diodes back to the light bulb. The capacitor then smooths out the rippling half wave and this prevents any flicker in the LED light bulb. And finally, we add the fusible resistor. This really reduces the rapid inrush current when the capacitor first charges up. This will really help extend the life of the capacitor. And because it's the fusible type resistor, it will also protect against any short circuits and will simply open up like a regular fuse and disconnect the circuit. So from a safety perspective, it's a really good idea to use this resistor. So even though this circuit is extremely simple, it's still very easy to make a mistake. You just have to get any one of these diodes or capacitor in the wrong polarity and most likely the components will be destroyed, probably with a loud bang. So take care, it's an experimental circuit but it does work really, really well. Just make sure you get all the polarities correct. And remember, once the magic smoke leaves your components, it's very hard to put that smoke back in. So yeah, that works great. With uh, the M5 three gang, you can obviously use it on a two gang or a single gang as well. Um, so it's worth making it into these little isolated inline module things. Um, you can have an inline version for the light bulb. Much neater, makes a much nicer job. Um, but it's worth noting that it actually works for several other smart switches, like for instance this, um, uh, the TX range. This is the TXT3 from Sonoff, and it works a treat with this one as well. And some of you have asked me if it's possible to test it. I have tested it, it works great, so maybe I should do a video on this one as well. I know it feels like I'm repeating things, but people want to see it, so I'm, I'll make the video. And then I've tested it on the uh, Deal R3, Son of Deal R3, works great. On the Shelly range, 
um, the, the Shelly One and the Shelly One Plus, I believe. I mean, and somebody has tested one of the other ones as well. But it works, works great. And of course, uh, the one that started this off, the Mini R2, that works great too. So I think there's going to be a couple more videos and um, I hope you guys will join us on them. So if you guys uh, want to see any more videos like this, um, let me know in the comments. Uh, tell me what you think, if this is a good idea or not. I really enjoyed making this video. I'll see you on the next one.